Hi, my name is Dr. Ed Glazer for Legends in Podiatry. And today I have the pleasure, the honor, of interviewing Mary Crawford, one of the icons in our profession and the first woman president of the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons. Dr. Crawford, the first thing I'd like to ask you is a little bit about where you came from. Where were you born? Where did you go to school? Where you grew up? I actually uh, was uh, born in Orlando, Florida, so I'm a Floridian. Um, lived there until I was around 11. Then my father got stationed up in Syracuse, New York, so we went from the climate of Orlando, Florida, up to Syracuse, New York. Quite a, quite a change. Went to Wells College, which was an all-women's college up in upstate New York, and then went to Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania College of Podiatric Medicine from there. When you say stationed, was he in the military? He, yes, he was a navigator for the Air Force, so he was a, he retired as lieutenant colonel of the Air Force. So I'm a military brat, so. <laughs> so you went to Wells College, an all-women's school. What was your major? What were your interests? I was a double major. I was a biology and chemistry major and a math minor, and I left after three years having completed those um, requirements and uh, went to PCPM after my third year. So what influenced you to be a podiatrist? Initially, I'm, I'm not sure I was podiatry. I knew it was going to be medicine. My mother's a biology professor, still teaches full-time at one of the SUNY colleges in upstate New York. And so I knew I was going to do something in the field of biology or, or medicine along those lines, initially wish, uh, thinking I was going to be a veterinarian, actually. Um, my college required your junior year to go and work in the field you thought you wanted to go into. Uh, so I went to a veterinary office and worked for maybe a month, uh, six weeks. Uh, it didn't come out as good as I had hoped. Uh, I'm a real animal lover, so it was very hard to see an animal uh, suffering. And so change of career paths, uh, worked with an orthopedic surgeon in my area for the summer between my junior and my senior year of college. And uh, after working quite a bit with the orthopedist, we had long talks about um, different fields and what I felt my strengths were. And uh, he recommended podiatric medicine and surgery, which hadn't even crossed my mind, honestly. It was not something that had ever uh, interested me or had not even really thought anything about. And, and then there were several uh, very prominent podiatric surgeons in the Rochester area where my sister lives, and I went with them for quite a while and uh, absolutely loved the profession as soon as I actually got familiar with it. So which podiatrists were influential in helping you make your decision? Uh, probably David Chazen. He was up in Rochester. He a uh, very prominent physician and uh, well-respected by the community, well-respected by um, the, the medical colleagues, and had been very active in the um, both with the American Board of Podiatric Surgery, and he was an examiner for them, and, um, he, and, he, and yet he was an older physician and had really, um, I think, done a, a remarkable things in his, in his practice through the years, looking at the evolution of the, the actual surgical field. And uh, so I was very lucky that that was who I rotated with and uh, spent a lot of time with and was one of my mentors. I, I imagine you could have gone to any podiatry school. Why Philadelphia? Uh, well, truly, because it was in commuting distance from Syracuse. It was a five, uh, five to five and a half hour drive straight up 81, and then you were, you were home. Um, it also had a, a very well-run and um, um, high-volume patient exposure clinic, so that was a, that was a big asset uh, as well. It was, for me, it was really going to be between Chicago, which the Scholl College at that time also had a very active clinic, and, um, and the Philadelphia School, and I, um, I chose Philadelphia. So, so uh, what year did you graduate, and how many women were in your class at that time? I graduated in 1988, and um, I'm probably not accurate, but I would believe there were about 18 women in my class out of 100 and... Um, I believe it was a, probably about 108 in, in the class total. So it was, not, it was not heavily populated with women at the time as it is now. 
of the professors at PCPM, who inspired you and why? Oh, you know, I was very fortunate. You know, at uh, PCPM, a lot of the professors were, uh, especially in the surgical department, were graduates of the uh, Podiatry Institute program in, in Georgia. So we had a lot of, we had uh, Michael, D Michael Downey, who's a phenomenal, very well-renowned uh, surgeon. Uh, we had guest lectures all the time from Gerard Yu would come to the, the school and speak. You had Scott Millay. Um, you know, so there were Karen Mann. I mean, these were all the Podiatry Institute, um, you know, truly legends in their, in their time and, and still are with their surgical knowledge. And so they, they really were uh, very instrumental for me. And then uh, Gary Bauer was the anatomist, the DPM who did the, or the um, professor who did anatomy and uh, also just, he's, I believe he's still there, but he also was as absolutely instrumental because uh, he got you very involved in anatomy and you can't be a can't be a surgeon if you can't do anatomy. So, You know, there are so many subspecialties in podiatry, biomechanics, wound care, diabetics. What made you decide to go into surgery as a specialty? The, well, I think truly having started this all out with an orthopedist, that that's where I was going to go. And then with David Chazen, who was very involved in the surgical field, I think all my exposure was very heavily surgically weighted from from almost the very beginning, uh, and then of course to have professors like Downey and Malay and Mann and you know all these people who are so known in the surgical fields, um, so that probably played the most part. Um, being an athlete um, was never um, high on my list, so it, sports medicine was not a high focus for me. Although I, I love to talk about the biomechanics of the foot and ankle, but as far as being highly involved with any sports medicine, uh, was not a not a huge interest of mine. So I think just how many people I got exposed to from the surgical element of it, I think that's what drove me that direction. Now everybody knows your accomplishments in podiatric surgery, but you're also an athlete. Did you compete in high school and college? I did, but um, it never was the the absolute um, intense focus where you see a true competitive athlete where um, you know nothing stands in the way of that competition and uh, I never was at that level um, enjoyed the competition enjoyed to win absolutely enjoyed to win but would, it never really occupied that uh, deepest element of my being when I was competing I actually was a runner that was what I did do until my knees said to not do that anymore. So. so you graduated PCPM. What influenced your choice of residency? Where did you go and why did you choose that residency? Um, you could say I'm the luckiest human alive. I actually was in the mix of a, a situation where with the national way that you chose residency programs there was both CASPER and non-CASPER programs and you could interview at, at both of them. And if you chose a non-CASPER program, you pulled out and you signed a contract right then and there um, of that's where you were going to go. And I was offered a program in Tennessee. I was offered a program in uh, Michigan. I was offered a program in Virginia, all non-CASPER. But my first outside of the school externship had been at Waldo in Seattle. And that was a phenomenal experience. Just the way they respected their residents, their the residents' opinions, the, what the residents actually were being trained to do, very um, uh, the the thought their thought process. They wanted to know how the residents thought, and they wanted to kind of push you out of the box and make you think outside that box. And that always was kind of for me the the way I thought that learning should be. So, but that was a Casper program. So if you signed a non-Casper, you were done. If you stayed in Casper, it was the luck of the draw. It's however the cards came out. And um, I was very fortunate to have been matched with Waldo and, and went to Seattle, Washington in 1988 and never went back home. 